Yay! First Facebook Live. Are you able to see these? Oh, go ahead and take these off. They're easier to dip when the tape is off. It's okay. That's all right. You're on live. You're on live. We're good. We're good. We are good. All right. Are we all set up? Hope you guys are ready. It's 87 degrees in Cleveland. It's our first Facebook Live. Stay tuned in just a few minutes. It's on the whole time. <laughs> Hi, it's Debbie May from Wholesale Supplies Plus. We're in a very busy handmade studio today. We've got people making things, a lot of kids here with their parents. But I'm going to talk to you today about using the fragrance formulator because today is the last day it's on sale and I've just gotten 10 emails about how do I exactly use it. I came up with Fragrance Formulator about five years ago, the concept, because I kept hearing about customers being at craft shows with other soap makers or cosmetic makers, and they had the same fragrances that they were offering. Same oatmeal, milk, and honey, same maybe sun and sand, apple spice. And I started thinking, well, Wholesale Supplies Plus carries 700 and different, 750 different fragrance oils, how many are we going to carry? My husband kept telling me we're out of room, don't add any more. But customers kept saying, can I have this one with a little bit more pineapple or this one with a little bit more apple? So I got together with a group of chemists and developed the fragrance formulator. It's about 40 different oils. They're very simple, not quite single note, but they're intended to be blended together. They have the same base, they have the same molecular structure so that they easily blend. And today we're going to make a couple of scents, just ex interact, um, not interacting, exchanging a few oils so that you can see using four different oils, you're able to make 20 or more different fragrances. So it's very economical for you. Feel free to give us lots of likes and shares over on Facebook. Ask your questions. I've got a team behind the, behind the camera and I want to answer everything you need to know. So the fragrance wheel is the first thing I want to talk about. It has all the different fragrance oils that you can get in Fragrance Formulator. And the really cool thing is on the back is about 40 different blends that we've already done for you. And the important thing to note is each of the blends has 10 drops or 10 parts. This equals 100%. You always want to stick to 10 when you're making your blend so that you have something that you can scale up or down depending on the size of your batch. I know it's a little loud, so bear with us. Again, it's a very happy, fun day at the studio. So the first scent we're going to make is an apple spice. And in this fragrance, i got to wear my glasses because I'm all of 53 this year. This scent is going to have seven apple. So before we went live, I labeled these fragrance formulator sticks with the term apples, so I knew which are which. And there's a line on this stick, and you dip it into the oil up to that line. And then shake it off. And then you want to use a clothespin or something and fan it out and kind of let it start to dry. This apple is one of my favorites. It's almost like a red apple or a red delicious, N a little bit of skin, not super sweet, but not sour, and it's really nice for blending. So we're going to set those here, and the next oil in the blend is pear. So we have seven parts of the apple, and now we're going to do two parts of the pear. So I pre-labeled those sticks pear, because as I'm playing, I may take away some apple, may add a new one, dip it to the line, shake it out, 
Now this pear is kind of sweet. It really smells just like a true pear. I'm going to add that to my uh, clothespin. And now if I smell just these together, it smells a little bit like a fruit medley to me. Heavier on the apple, but the pear almost gives it a sweet note. But it's really still pretty heavy on the apple. So we're going to clip those together, stand them up. And now I'm going to do one part spice because the spice is really pretty strong. So I labeled it spice. And this spice reminds me of my grandmother's spice cabinet. I can smell a little bit of cinnamon, cinnamon a little bit of clove, and almost an allspice type note. And when I add that to my fan of others, knowing that I'm keeping it on the end, I really, I really get the smell of like an apple cider. You know that fall walk where the apples are on the ground? They're kind of red, they're kind of green, maybe a few brown because of the sweet pear. And you get a really nice spice note. I could see this in a fall lotion. I even could see it in a sugar scrub or a soap. I picture almost a brown or an orange soap. I don't know how many of you are aware of this, but many of us, and you should train yourself if you're not, see or smell fragrances in color. So close your eyes and think of a banana. What do you smell? Do you smell the skin? A yellow banana. Do you, is it ripe like a green banana? Close your eyes. So when I close my eyes with this scent, I smell a little tan, I smell a little orange, yellow, kind of typical fall colors. I really, really like it. I think it would be very popular. Now what I want to do is the next bottle I have is bakery. And I took the spice note away, so I have seven apple, I have two pear, and I'm going to add one bakery instead of the spice. And I'm going to let this kind of marry together because you want a fragrance that tells a story. And I'm going to answer a question. Maddie, what's the question on Facebook? Um, it says, do the sticks come in with the blending kit? The sticks do come with the blending kit that you buy. If you buy the individual oils, you can buy the sticks separately, but it does come with the blending kit. Great question. And now what I smell is more of an apple turnover. So we have the seven apples, the two pears, and instead of the spice, we added the bakery. And this bakery smells almost like a pie crust. We just recently did Handmade Conference, and one of the conferences, someone smelled this, this blending oil, the fragrance formulator oil, and she said, it smells like pumpkin. Why does mine smell like pumpkin? And it's because the, our sense of smell is tied to an area of our brain that um, deals with memory. And it turns out she has only ever had a pumpkin pie. She never had an apple pie. She never had a berry pie. So when she smelled the pie crust, she smelled ap or pumpkin, where I would smell apple because I grew up like loving apple pies. So when I put this with the apple and the pear, I definitely get heavy on the apple because that's seven parts. The sweetness of the pear, and boy, it rounds right out with the, uh, the bakery. This would make a great apple turnover, um, an apple pie. It, it really is really nice, even as an apple pie. So there you can see, with four oils, you made two different scents. You could cut back on the apple and add more pear. I also have another blotter. We could add a little vanilla. Maddie, is there another question? I, from Ella, I'm in the UK. How would the SDS be formulated for a blend as opposed to a single oil? Hi, Ella. Ella's from the UK. I'm so glad you tuned in. And the IFRA levels and the use levels are so important. So each of the oils come with an SDS sheet, so you're good there on the singles. And you always want to look at the IFRA guidelines that we have posted on the different oils. These are relatively new. They should all be online. 
Um, so let's take an example of a blend. I'm gonna, I don't know these off the top of my head yet, but let's say the apple had an IFRA of a 20, and you're using, let's pretend, 50% of that. It's half apple, let's say it's half pear. So let's say, let's say this is a 10, an IFRA of 10. And let's say this one's an IFRA of five. You would take your IFRA of 10, multiply it by 50%, or take half of that, which is the five now, and you would take the five, which you're only using half, and that's a two and a half. So your overall IFRA for this blend would be a seven and a half. It's more than the five and less than the 10. So you need to look at the portions or the number of drops or the percentages that you're using when you make that blend. I hope that's clear. If it's not, Ella, put your email address and I'm happy to send you an email personally and work it out with some diagrams. It's a great, great question. And I think it might also make a great video, new Facebook Live video with some charts, maybe in our business center. Um, you all, so that's a great question. Um, you guys can read it down there. Wants to offer custom fragrances that no one else has. You always want to stick with the number 10. So that way when you find the blend you like, it equals 100%. You're able to scale it up or down depending on your batch. It could be one drop, um, one ml, one ounce, one pound part. So if you had, in this case, Let's say I was doing a large batch. This was seven apple, two pear, and one spice. It could be seven mLs, two mLs, one mL. It could be seven ounces, two ounces, one ounces. You could, one ounce, you could make that ahead of time, mix it in a bottle, and you could later draw off of that for your batches. I hope that answers your question. Gail wants me to do some mixing. I'm going to have the team go to the back and grab some droppers and a beaker, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So be right back with your question, Gail. Any other questions right now? No, but shout out to Lewis. Uh, he said, love you and love your store. Thank you for the best soap conference ever. Oh, Lewis was just at our um, soap conference in June and July. It was great. 300 people attended. We're doing another conference here in Independence, Ohio in June of 2018. We're accepting, we have 350 tickets to sell and I'm so excited, we've already half sold out. We've got 100 tickets sold. So if you get a chance, go on our website, wholesalesuppliesplus.com, sign up for the conference, email Kara and she'll put you on a payment plan. That's Kara at wholesalesuppliesplus.com. I see my droppers and beaker coming in. So Lewis's question, I think Lewis, Gail's question was, how can I blend for later? Is that correct, Maddie? Uh, this is our first slide, so bear with us. I have a whole team behind me reading me the questions. Anyway. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go for the bakery one because it kind of reminded me of the apple pie I grew up with. Um, so again, it's seven parts apple, two parts pear, and one part spice. So I have a beaker that I'm gonna use. Let's say I'm making one batch. In this case, my droppers go up to three mLs. So, gotta get the air out of that. There we go. So that's three, six, and now I'm gonna go to seven which is right there. So that's the seven parts apple. Now I'm gonna go two milliliters of the pear. Add that in. And I'm gonna go one part of the bakery, which is one ml, because the whole recipe we're doing in mls. And I'm just gonna stir that up. A lot of people ask me if they can reuse the droppers. I had someone phone in. She washes them out with Dawn, and I thought this was pretty clever. She then puts a rubber band around her bottle and stores the dropper like this so that that dropper is only used with that 
I think it's a super sustainable idea. Um, and now you have seven, nine, 10 mLs of your custom blended fragrance. If I was a higher volume user, I might have made this in ounces. I might have used seven ounces, two ounces, and one ounce. And we sell the amber bottles that you can then pour that mixture into and save it, label it, and save it for later. Let me know if, that, if you had any other questions with that. Are they all phthalate free? Are they all phthalate free? All of our fragrances are phthalate free. free. Both the, thank you, Abby, both the um, Crafter's Choice line, which are already blended, and all the fragrance formulator, phthalate free. Um, just to show you, this is a custom blend we did in the studio, and you can see we mixed, um, I think we did 10 ounces total with this one. This is a 16 ounce bottle, so that's why it's not totally full. If it was yours, you might say apple pie, you might put whatever you're going to name on it, hopefully something more specific than my custom blend one. Any other questions? Can these fragrance oils be used for candle wax? Can these oils be used in candle wax? I have to tell you right now, no. We really focused on formulating for the personal care industry. Soaps, lotions, cosmetics, bath salts, and scrubs, none of them have been tested to work in candles, and they haven't been longevity tested for flame and how it would affect your wick. So no, not at this time, but that's a great idea for another uh, blend. Any others right now? Well, before we sign off, you guys have been so great. I do have something I want to share. Um, right now, all of the Fragrance Formulator products are on sale to midnight tonight, Eastern Standard Time. So um, don't forget that. If you want to play, you can get some set. The really cool thing is the sets of Fragrance Formulator are on, always on sale, and now they're on an added discount sale, so that's really cool. But Sue, who's one of our technical support people, when you write in questions and answers on the website or see new recipes, it's usually Sue that came up with those. She was in the lab, and I snuck in and stole this about 10 minutes before we went live. It's a new brown sugar scrub that's going into Handmade Magazine. If you're not a subscriber, it's a super, super um, magazine that we put out each month with tips and recipes and business articles and lots of good stuff. You can buy it at WholesaleSuppliesPlus.com. But what I liked is it's a coffee scrub, and she blended coffee, sugared, which is a sweet one, and an amber, all in fragrance formulator. And she gave me her little cheat sheet. She did five parts coffee, three parts amber, and two parts sugar. And the reason why I wanted to bring this in is so many times people make a coffee scrub and it smells like a barista. It smells like a coffee house. It smells like you just opened the coffee, a bag of coffee. What I really like about this aroma is it's kind of warm and it's kind of sexy. And it's something I would want to use like on my face, body, and soap and bath salts. So the really cool thing is you can customize your coffee scent to whatever you want. If you want it a little sexy, if your line is branded that way, you're able to do it with the uh, with the fragrance formulator. We have a few more questions, Maddie. Okay. Um, would you recommend making a recipe card for your new formula and maybe writing it on a sharpie from their storage bottle? Um, she never remembers the bottles um, and formulas from memory. And this is from Allison. Hi, Allison. I think that's a great idea. I love. I am old school. I am 50. I'm going to be 53 years old. I like recipe cards and I like recipe boxes. These young millennials that come into this company with their spreadsheets and everything, that's great, it works for them, but I am totally old school. So I would write your recipe down, and on the back of that, I'd write the other blends that you tried that maybe you liked or didn't like and put some notes with it, and then categorize it. You could put it in a notebook, but I like an old-fashioned recipe card where I can pull it out and use it when I'm making my blend. You could, you know, you could put color ideas in case you're a little brain dead the day you go to make soap. Um, alternative names. You could be as creative as you want, but I like recipe cards. Great question. Uh, from Lynn. Hi, is, Lynn. Is there a place to see if it will turn the process dark or colored? So the question is, is there a place to see if it'll turn cold process dark or accelerate? 
We do give you the vanilla notes on all of the fragrance formulators, and we know that vanilla is the leading cause of soap turning dark. So I'd first point you to that. But remember, if you're using one oil that has a lot of vanilla and you're using another oil in the blend that has none, you're actually cutting that vanilla in half. So you're able to play with these. A lot of these blend um, oils have no vanilla in them. That was one of the things we really tried to get away with. Um, so that's, your way, that's the way. In terms of seizing, there's really no way for us to tell. We're going to put seize notes and performance notes on all of these for cold process. But because you're blending your own, you may add a lot of spice and a little bit of apple, and that may seize because there are some spices, if we know those can be temperamental. Same with florals. So my recommendation is until you've tried it in soap, soap at cooler temperatures, don't use your stick blender. You can even heat the fragrance up just a touch so it doesn't shock your soap quite as much. And then keep your notes on that recipe card. Okay, is a Crafter's Choice blend good for using in custom blends? Are the Crafter's Choice fragrance oils good for custom blends? Great question, and the answer is no. And the reason is Crafter's Choice oils are made with all different ingredients and all different bases, and they're already blended. So you may add two, but something may fall out, and over time they may separate. That's what makes the fragrance formulator so special, because the chemists have formulated them so they will molecularly stay together when blended, and that doesn't always happen if you're trying to blend fragrances from different suppliers or different Crafter's Choice ones. Great question. Another question again, um, just clarifying, are you using one ounce per pound of soap? So the question is, how much do I use then in my product? You want to look at those IFRA levels, and we'll go ahead and do a sh another show on that in our business center where I can get a marker and some PowerPoints. But it, typically with cold process soap, you'll want to use about 6%. Your base will accept that. I like to use about 3% in melt and pour soap. You can go a little higher, but it may make the soap a little softer. For lotions, you want to do about 1%. You don't want to thin out your lotion, and same with shower gel. Bath bombs, you can go a little bit higher because the final product's diluted in the bath water. So it really depends on how, what your product is and how much uh, fragrance you can use in the base. Uh, from Jesse, how do you best... Hi, Jesse. So the question is, on the, and I'm going to put this away because it smells so good I could eat it, and I did not have lunch yet. So the question is the blending binder. On the color wheel, or on the fragrance wheel, you'll see one black strip that says bl blending binder. Some of the fragrances are super, super strong. For example, we have one that's like a hot pepper. I can't imagine ever using one part hot pepper. Oh, thanks, Abby. This is what the blending binder looks like. I cannot ever picture using one part hot pepper in any blend. So what you can do is you can cut down that hot pepper or the scent that's really super strong and maybe take half and half, half of the a hot pepper and half of the blending binder so that then when you do take one part in your formula, it's not overwhelming. Um, salsa, a mango salsa, mango salsa is great, but even one part hot pepper with your mango and maybe a, um, a floral or a green note is just going to be too much. It's going to smell hot, hot, hot. So the blending binder, you use that to tone down super strong oils before you put one of your 10 parts in. Great question. Hi, Rita. So the question is, is 50% the use? Um, I'm not really sure uh, what you mean, so we'll look for a follow-up question. But you always want 10 parts. So in the um, formula we did earlier, we did seven parts apple, two parts pear, one part bakery, and that gave us an apple turnover or an apple pie. You can make up whatever name you want. You always want it to be 10 parts because that's 100%. And that allows you to easily scale your recipe up or down if you're making a huge batch or you just want to make a bar of soap. Any other questions? No, but a nice tip uh, from Cheryl. The magazine is awesome. Not a subscriber, but I have several editions I've picked up here and there. Highly recommend for tips, recipes, oh, just like when cooking. 
Cheryl, thanks for the huge shout out to the magazine. Here's one of the issues. It's a great magazine. We're in the process of revamping it a little bit. It's been several years and we just, we're gonna update the look a little bit. The great, same great content. If you order online from Wholesale Supplies Plus, just $40 a year, you get all issues and past issues in your digital bookcase so you can flip through and you just need to buy $40 a year. If you're a higher level customer, go on to your rewards, you have coupons then. If you buy $500 a year or more, you'll get coupons for free issues that you, in print, like this, that you can have mailed with an order. So that's kind of cool. And we've got business articles. Um, we've just got recipes, lots of cool, cool stuff. One of the new um, features that we're gonna have is fragrance formulator, new blends. Purchasing department just before we went live told me we have 30 new fall blends just for fall and Christmas coming out. So we'll come out with another color wheel. These are a general 40. We'll have just fall, fall and winter. So that's exciting. So I want to thank you guys for joining us for our very first Facebook Live. I've seen lots of people do it. I was super, super nervous. You guys are so kind. I appreciate your business your friendships. Um, I feel like I'm, you're my neighbors. I got to be honest with you. Um, I just love looking online and seeing the products you make and, and the comments you have. So with that, look for more Facebook Lives. Comment in the bottom. I'll be online for a little bit answering questions. Have a super day. Thank you. Good night.